So what's really interesting about ketamine is that it shuts off symbolic reasoning and thinking. And it's difficult to explain to someone the significance of that. Basically, it nukes your conceptual mind. very significantly, even at a moderate dose. And if the dose was doubled, I would imagine that it would wipe that out entirely. It becomes quite difficult to think. It becomes difficult to reason. It becomes difficult to do analysis or any kind of symbolic logic, which is mostly what you're doing with your mind most of the time. And I was doing some research in pre preparation for this talk looking at some scientific studies of, you know, what does ketamine actually do sort of neurologically, uh, chemically in the brain? How does it actually function? And what kind of effect does it have on, you know, brain waves and that kind of thing? And there was a great research study that they did recently on sheep where they gave ketamine to sheep. And what they realized is that when you give a high enough dose of ketamine to a sheep, what happens is, and then they, they attach electrodes, you know, they basically do an EEG scan with electrodes of the of the sheep's brain. And what they notice is that it, it, it completely shuts off the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is that part of your brain. You know, it's the, it's the frontal lobes, so to speak. It's the most evolved, highest level part of the brain. In humans, especially, it's more evolved than in other animals. This is what distinguishes humans from other animals. This is what gives us our humanness, you might say, our capacity to reason, to logic, to analyze, to conceptualize. And all of language. So it deactivates that whole thing. And it's one thing just to say that to you, but it's another thing to actually live through what, you know, how that's happening. Um, now, you might say here, well, Leo, isn't that sort of like what the point of meditation is? is to shut off the thinking mind and just to sit there like an animal, like a cat on a windowsill and just experience life. And of course, that is a lot of what meditation aims to do. So very interestingly, what I found with ketamine is that it aligns very well, the kind of state of consciousness that it put me in aligns very well with the classic Buddhist Advaita Vedanta sorts of meditative states and experiences and even awakenings that I hear a lot from Buddhists and people who follow that sort of Eastern path. Um, a lot less mystical, a lot less visionary, I would say, and more just like it nukes the cerebral cortex. You lose even the desire to think or to analyze anything and it gives your mind a deep sense of relief. It almost turns you into an animal, I would say. If you want to know what it kind of like, you want to imagine what is it like to be an animal? They can't really logic. They can't do mathematics. They don't do advanced reasoning. They probably don't think very far ahead into the future or about their past. They're sort of just very like living in the moment and not doing a lot of symbolic thinking. And, and that's exactly what ketamine gets you a taste of. What's interesting though, is how it actually feels and what you, you know, what insights you take away from this. Because even though in this work, we talk a lot about how your mind is conceptualizing all the time and that really what you're living in is you're not living in reality. You're living in a sort of augmented reality where your conceptual mind is projecting and interpreting and doing like a lot of, a, a lot of, additional layers, adding a lot of additional layers on top of just the raw stuff that's there in reality, we might say. Uh, even though we all kind of logically know this, we understand this, but you don't appreciate how much of your life is conceptual until you take something like ketamine and it, it just wipes out the whole conceptual mind. I'll talk more about that in a second, but before I get there, because I just kind of want to go in order of how this occurred for me uh, during my experience, is that the first thing that I notice as all this is coming on, you know, beyond my visual field getting wonky and my inability to walk and all that, I'm just sitting there. The first thing that I notice is just how deeply relaxed and comfortable I start to feel. 
It puts me into an instant effortless meditative state where my mind is completely blank. And, 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 um, but you would think that, well, but if I'm, if I'm like in this dissociated sort of like mindless state, then it might feel bad. Actually, no, it, it feels amazing because for the first time in your life, perhaps, especially if you've never meditated or if you've never become a very efficient meditator, because it would take you years to be able to reach a state like this through meditation, you get to a point in, in you, you get to a point in this experience where you're completely free of your thinking mind. And it's such an enormous relief. It's like a giant weight has been lifted off your shoulders that you didn't even feel was there. In the same way that when you're walking around on the surface of the earth, it's pretty effortless just to walk around, but you don't actually feel how much work your body is doing to counteract the gravity on earth. But then when you shoot into outer space and you're floating around in a vacuum, then all of a sudden you see what it's really like when there's no gravity and how effortless that experience is. And then you come back down to earth and you feel, oh my God, it's so heavy to be on earth because I've been out in outer space, right? So this is the this is the experience that astronauts have. Well, the same sort of thing happens here, but with ketamine, but, but conceptually. You don't really appreciate how much of your life is deeply conceptual. Even many of the things that you think are scientific or physical facts actually turns out to be conceptual. And this gets wiped away, and it's quite astounding. Uh, personally, you know, I've meditated for years, but I've never been able to reach a, a meditative state that was this empty of thought and this sort of like mindless, you might say, like a true state of no mind. Uh, I've not be, been able to reach reach that just through my normal efforts. Uh, part of that is because I'm very conceptual, I'm very intellectual. So for me, one of my personal like greatest strengths, but also weaknesses in life is that I am very intellectual about my approach and my attitude towards life. There's pros and cons to that. So the biggest pro to that is that I can put out all this great deep content that explains to you using symbolic reasoning how reality works. That's what all of my videos are about, right? And if you like my content, that's why you like it. That's sort of like my unique selling point to you. But the flip side of that is that then it becomes difficult, really difficult to shut off the mind because the mind gets in this attitude of thinking and trying to understand everything all the time. So it, it's, it's in a sense, it's antithetical to, to meditation because in meditation, you just want a blank mind. And then, but then there's, there's also pros and cons to having a blank mind. So a lot of what the meditative people don't tell you, the Buddhists and so forth, they don't tell you what you're losing by being in a state of no mind. You are losing some things too. You're not just gaining freedom. But for now, let's just focus on what you're gaining. What you're gaining is this enormous sense of freedom. I felt like so relaxed, so at ease and deeply happy like a profound sense of happiness. And it's not a happiness that's like an ecstatic pleasure or bliss or ecstasy, which of course you can experience on classic psychedelics. I've experienced that a lot. That's its own separate category of happiness. This happiness here, it's a much more even keeled, just like mellow, very chill, just like, ah, oh, complete relief from the need to think about anything. You're not thinking about your future anymore. You're not thinking about work tomorrow. You're not thinking about the kids that you got to take care of. You're not thinking about all the shit in your life that's bothering you. All of that is wiped out. And what I imagine for many people, this will be the first time in their life that they have been truly happy. There's just like a, a pure, very innocent joy to just sitting and being comfortable 